This is the lecture for the last chunk of the Doctrine of Right, and so the first topic is that this is the last chunk of the Doctrine of Right that we're reading, and it's also basically the end of the book. Uh, he sort of added some stuff at the end, uh, which at, at, after publishing, which we're going to skip. Uh, but so the Doctrine of Right is Kant's main political philosophical work, and so once we finish it, we've basically got like all of his main ideas. A lot of the ideas will be expanded on a lot in a perpetual piece, which we'll end up reading. So we just get like a very brief preview of them. Uh, but it, it's worth sort of like now that we get to the end of the book, of course, we skipped some parts, but now that we get to the end of the book, you can think, oh, I've sort of read much of what he has to say about political philosophy, and I have the whole picture now. Uh, next topic number two who is the sovereign so we talked on friday uh about like what what exactly is kant picturing the state looking like like who is in charge who is the sovereign who is the supreme proprietor of the land who is uh you know the lord of the land uh in, uh, is this the executive and stuff and so we get a bit more discussion of that here so section 51 he's going to talk about like uh the legislator and stuff and so that's worth uh, paying attention to to try to figure this out. It's still kind of confusing, but this helps uh, give more detail. Uh, I guess this isn't on the outline, but while we're at it, section 52, um, this is like, if you remember one of the earlier lectures, I said, Kant says that we should never look into the founding of the historical state, and here's here it is in the book, and that was in reference to me saying in class once or twice that Kant says this, and so he actually says this twice, and uh, this is the second time he says it. And I think he actually said it even more fully here. So um, be ready for that. Uh, and then next, so if you think back to um, last Wednesday's reading, I believe, um, yeah, so last Wednesday's reading when we started the public right, and he divided public right up into three sections, and we talked about this. Uh, there's the uh, the right, the public right within a state, and then there's the right of nations, and then uh, there's which is the right for which is yeah which is the right for a state of nations, and then there's cosmopolitan right. So uh, I said this stuff was coming, and most of this we're going to look at in detail in perpetual peace. But uh, in this reading, like the, this reading that I'm doing the lecture on right now. Uh, we do get his sort of first presentation of these ideas, and in fact, this reading is mostly about that. So uh, this reading starts on page 478 um, up here, but then only a few pages later on uh, 482, we start with the right of nations, and then we get some stuff on that, and then a few pages later, uh, we get cosmopolitan right. So uh, just be ready for that, and then also this is where we get a lot of his initial thoughts about uh, colonialism, and since this will be one of the big topics we look at next, um, you want to pay attention to that. And specifically, we had, um, in the reading for Friday, I'm scrolling very slowly, in the reading for Friday, last Friday, um, he talked about, hmm, maybe I can... Uh, so this was the reading for Friday, but I, I kind of wasn't intending you to read this far. I sort of figured you would stop here, but some people kept reading because page 478 was assigned. So anyways, he mentions on 478 on the reading on Friday, and then in this reading too, because we're reading this page again. Uh, he says, the lord of the land has the right to encourage immigration and settling by foreigners, colonists, even though his native subjects might look askance at this, provided that their private ownership of land is not curtailed by it. So this is colonialism it i mean colonialism isn't even maybe the right word it's colonization uh and it's not even like colonization really it's a settlement by foreigners so it's foreigners coming in and living in the territory on the land but this is sort of with the permission of whoever's in charge um and the this is also uh providing that the private ownership of the people already there the natives is not curtailed by the settlement so this, whatever this is, you know, this is not what the Europeans were up to uh, when they were colonizing uh, places all around the world and things like that. What Kant is picturing here is sort of uh, 
like basically immigration and letting people uh, set up shop really um, in uh, the land. So that's uh, not like against the will of the state, whereas colonization is certainly against the will of the state. So when Kant talks about colonization later in the reading, um, it's not this sort of benign thing where it's just inviting foreigners in, uh, but it's actual colonization. So there's that. <laughs>